has a famous saying in Latin, Lex orandi, lex credendi, lex vivendi, which means that the way we pray, what we believe in, and the life that we live are all interconnected. In other words, the way we worship must correspond to whom we worship, and this in turn will help us lead a life of virtue and of holiness. Since we worship a God who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, a magnanimous, supreme and infinite God, the way we worship Him should bear a semblance of His own grandeur and His magnanimity. The Catholic Church knows this. That's why there are so many signs and symbols in the liturgy, each and every one of which has a significance. Among them, we find different colours of vestments, prescribed for the different liturgical feasts and seasons. What are the officially allowed colours of vestments? What is the significance behind each of these colours? And how did all of this come about? We are going to answer all of these questions and more in this video. As with most aspects of the liturgy of the Catholic Church, vestment colours developed organically. There were no specific colours prescribed for the sacred vestments in the early church. This can be seen in the frescoes and the mosaics of catacombs and ancient basilicas, where artists produced their paintings by randomly choosing colours for vestments of the priests. However, many documents from the 4th and 5th centuries refer to splendidly coloured vestments used for the celebration of the Most Holy Sacrifice of Mass. In the 5th century, the so-called Carta Corinthiana speaks of rich purple and golden vestments being used to adorn and embellish the ciboriums of the basilicas. The colour white present in linen clothes was also used in Christian ceremonies, drawing from the Roman custom where white was used on feast days in their religious ceremonies because it symbolised purity. The first instance where a specific colour was prescribed for a particular feast can be found in the 21st Roman Ordo, dating back to the second half of the 8th century. The document stated that on the feast of the presentation of Jesus and on the major rogation day, that is the 25th of April, which was previously a day that was reserved for fasting and praying, beseeching protection from natural calamities, the priests and the deacons must enter the Holy of Holies, the sanctuary, wearing black vestments. During the reign of Charlemagne, we can see a great deal of colours being used in the liturgy. For instance, in this period, an Irish treatise on the liturgy prescribes the colours of vestments to be used during Mass. They are gold, blue, white, green, brown, red and purple. In the 12th century, the church in Jerusalem built by the Crusaders had the following colours for the different occasions of the liturgical year. For Lent, the Feast of the Purification and Advent, black vestments were used. For Pentecost, Feast of the Holy Cross and the Feast of St. Stephen, red was used. For Easter, white. For Ascension, blue, to symbolise the blue skies which envelop the Creator. For Christmas, either red or white and for Epiphany, either blue or yellow. The reason for so many colours to be chosen for the liturgy was obviously to represent the spiritual symbolism contained in each of them, thus demonstrating an analogy with the liturgical feast itself. Finally, in the 13th century, Pope Innocent III was the first official commentator on the symbolism of liturgical colours. In his work, De Sacro Altaris Mysterio, he develops this theme and lists five colours aggregated by the Catholic Church to be the five official colours of vestments. White, red, green, black and purple. Purple to be used in the absence of black as its equivalent in most cases. This was later approved by Pope St. Pius V, the Pope of the Council of Trent, and this colour scheme prevails to this day. Now that we know how these colours organically developed throughout the centuries, let us analyse their symbolism and the proper occasions for which each of them is to be used in the various days of the liturgical year. White symbolises joy. It symbolises innocence, the glory of the angels, the triumph of the saints, the dignity and victory of our blessed Saviour as well. It is used on the feasts of our Lord Jesus Christ, in order of the Blessed Virgin and in general 
on the face of all the saints who are not martyrs. Gold being a joyful and festive color is generally used for most solemn feasts. However, it can also replace any other liturgical color except purple and black. Red represents vivacity and since it is a color of blood, it symbolizes life itself and also the burning furnace of charity. It is prescribed to be used on the feast of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost, the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross, Mass is celebrated in memory of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the feasts of the Apostles since they were martyrs, and also for the feast of all the other martyrs. Green symbolizes hope and perennity. This is the color that is most used throughout the liturgical year, that is throughout ordinary time. It is used after Epiphany, that is Christmas season, and after Pentecost, that is Easter season, to mystically symbolize the continuation of our earthly pilgrimage, which is ever filled with spiritual battles, inner spiritual battles, and a myriad other external struggles. Every Catholic must face them throughout his or her life, and this vestment is used to give us hope to march forward with confidence in God towards our eternal reward. Purple denotes penance, fasting, and the recognition of one's own faults in the presence of God. However, in the Bible, the symbolism is quite the opposite. If you are familiar with the Old Testament, you would note that purple was a very regal color, a color of the great kings and administrators. For instance, Daniel is adorned with a purple garment and bedecked with gold by Belshazzar, etc. There are many instances. This idea continues into the New Testament where Jesus, while describing the rich man in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, says that he was dressed in purple and fine linen. But then, why does the Catholic Church choose this color to symbolize penance? We find our answer in the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 5. Jesus then came out wearing the crown of thorns and a purple robe. And Pilate said to the people, Behold the man, Ecce Homo. The color that erstwhile was used to symbolize royalty and grandeur was mockingly used to insult the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords himself. Therefore, the Catholic Church, truly being Christ's mystical spouse, prescribes that her ministers be clothed in the same color, partaking in his humiliation, which later brought about our glorification. As a result, it is used during Advent, Lent, the vigils of great feasts, in view of the spiritual preparations that one must make to worthily participate in those feasts, in memory of the faithful departed, that is funeral masses and months mind masses, etc. Black represents mourning and what on the surface seems to be the power of darkness that rises up against God, but which eventually fails. Its use is restricted only to Holy Saturday and funeral masses and during the recitation of the Office of the Dead. If black vestments are not available, purple vestments are used instead. Now, the reason behind the color pink being used in the liturgy is very interesting. To understand the reason, we need to go back a little in time. The popes for centuries have had the custom of blessing a golden rose each year, which is made by skillful artisans, and he would occasionally confer this golden rose upon illustrious churches, sanctuaries, uh, basilicas to kings and queens also, or even distinguished persons as a token of special reverence and devotion. For instance, Pope Pius XII in the year 1953 gifted a golden rose to the Say Cathedral in Goa. Now, what does this golden rose have to do with pink vestments? The golden rose is customarily blessed on the Letare Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday of Lent. Liturgically, the church on this Sunday bids her children who have been engaged in prayer for the last three weeks along with fasting and other penitential works and acts of charity to look beyond Calvary and rejoice at the first rays of the Easter Sun, the risen Christ, who brings them redemption. It is an anticipation of the rejoicing of Easter while still being in the season of Lent. So pink being the most common color in which roses were found in Europe at that time, it was adopted for the occasion of the fourth Sunday of Lent and is thus called the Rose Sunday or the Refreshment Sunday. The color pink was only adopted at the end of the 16th century. Finally, we have blue. You may have already guessed the use case of the color blue. 
Yes, it is used for the feast days of Our Lady. However, the use of blue vestments was a special privilege granted by the Catholic Church to Spain in 1864 for the strong and zealous devotion that the Spaniards have had towards the Immaculate Conception of Our Lady. This privilege was later then passed on to all the colonies that came under the Spanish crown. So, if you want to see blue vestments being used in the liturgy, you should probably visit Spain or one of the Hispano-American countries. In other countries, in the absence of blue vestments, white vestments are used for the feast days of Our Lady. So, that pretty much sums up the various colors of vestments that are used in the Catholic liturgy and each of their significance. Praying for you and asking you to pray for us too.